are you doing here? Where are you going? Going? To see my friend, Olypius. He's off to Rome. Why are you so worried? Should I not be? I... Come. You have a son to think about, Augustine. And his mother. And you think I've forgotten. Look, perhaps you can wait for me in this church. I will pray for you. Yes. Yes, you go ahead and, and pray for me. And now, I better see to Olypius. Ah, there you are! Just in time! Prepare the ship for sea! Well, to Rome! Yes! Yes, to Rome! The eternal city, where wealth, fame, honor, pleasure, and all the happiness in this world awaits us. <laughs> <laughs> to be in these things. It's dusty. Brutus, we're supposed to be spying. Now keep it down. Do you hear me? I don't like it when you yell at me. I don't like this job. Why are we doing it anyway? We've gone over this time and again. There is too much discontent among the people and the Senate needs us to be their eyes and ears. And if we do a good job, we might get promoted. Uh -oh. Get down. I hate this job. Besides, nothing's happening to... Come on, Tulio, before he catches up with us. Get back here, you scoundrels. After all the time I've spent teaching you, your parents will hear about this. Come on. Skipped out on you without paying. Again? That's twice this month. How am I supposed to make a living? Now, now. Is this any way for Rome's foremost teacher of rhetoric to get his point across? I thought words were your weapon of choice, Augustine. Not sandals. Truthfully, I expected more. The cream of the crop of Rome, these senators' sons. Where's their self-respect, their integrity? Oh, perhaps I was wrong to come here. Hmm, very interesting. Senator's sons running off with the tutor's pay. I'll have to report that to... Ooh, what's this? Come, Brutus. Looks like this is going to be a busy day. A busy day indeed. Stop! Not the goddess of victory! The goddess is protector of Rome. You cannot take it up. I beg to differ, Prefect Simicus. I can and I must. Unless you wish to take it up with the Empress. That's what I thought. Take it away. How has it come to this that they are now taking away our gods? I thought you had gone to plead your case before the Empress. Well, obviously it didn't go very well, now did it? It's all the fault of that fool. Christian Bishop? What does he have to do with this? He's a manipulator, skillful with words. Bishop Ambrose has convinced many of our citizens to become Christians. They are growing in number and, as a result, abandoning our gods. And what does that have to do with the Empress? Oh, although she dislikes Ambrose, she cannot afford to offend the people. Oh, what I would 
do to get rid of him? What's that awful smell? <clears throat> oh, it's you two. What are you doing here? You're supposed to be out on the streets. That's what I hire you for. I couldn't help overhearing, get rid of Ambrose, you said. Oh, please. It was just a figure of speech. No, I wasn't meaning that, sir. What I mean is, if the tongue waggers a problem, bring in a muzzle. If the adder's poison's deadly, then bring in a cobra. If what are you talking about? A bright young man. A teacher of, uh, of... Arithmetic! No, rhetoric. Rhetoric. Teacher of language and communication. That's it. Augustine's his name. And? Good with words, I hear. He'd be a good match for that Ambrose you're going on about. Augustine? Yes. Called the best in Rome. A master at persuasion. You've heard him before. I'm sure an outstanding debater. He could be influential in turning the people against Ambrose. The Empress would be rid of him and... We would have no interference with our gods, of course. Oh, I think he's your answer. An interesting, interesting choice. Oh, no. Prefect, I... Master Augustine. I am... Prefect, I can assure you I meant the students no harm. Augustine! I only meant to scare them, but it's hardly cause for an arrest. Augustine! I have no idea what you are talking about, but I am not here to arrest you. I am here to offer you a position. Position? Yes, in the Palace of Milan. Where the Emperor resides? I hear you are brilliant. One with the strong ability to persuade, or was I misled? Misled? Well, uh, if you are here, sir, it is because you must in part believe what you have heard. No doubt, after having inquired as to my ability, from your trusted and highly ranked friends, many of whom I have successfully defended in legal matters. Secondly, as indicated by your presence, your need is both urgent and of great importance. Therefore, my reputation coupled with your need is surely satisfactory reason to consider me your man. Impressive. Tell me what to debate, and I will win on your behalf. Regardless of the matter? What do you mean? You know the Emperor is quite young. Twelve years old. His mother, the Empress Justina, seeks someone to speak on behalf of the young Emperor. Someone that can persuade the people that she, uh, I mean the young Emperor, has the people's best interests at heart. Someone who could be the voice of the Emperor. The voice of the Emperor? A prestigious position. Some people would do anything to obtain it. Anything. What would you have me do? Oh, it's very simple, really. Whatever I tell you to, that's all. When do we leave? Wonderful. <laughs> Ah, your life is going to change, Augustine. You wait and see. Milan will be the start of all you have ever dreamed of. At last! Our fortunes are changing, Olypius. Yes, just think of all the good you can do here, Augustine. Your position could help so many, don't you think? Could help whom? I said. Your position could... You Augustine? the envy of Milan, the voice of the Emperor. It will all be very simple, very simple indeed. Just remember to do exactly as I tell you. You better prepare yourselves. We're headed for a storm, and it's gonna be a big one. Don't worry, we shall be safe. God has given me a promise, a wonderful promise. Our fair, noble, and wise ruler, who so capably watches over his kingdom, this, our emperor, Valentinius II, gift of the heavens, 
who daily bestows upon each of us his undying care, does not he also deserve in return a small token of the great benefits we enjoy, that he may continue to watch over our cares? But, uh, sir? Uh, now, now, not to worry. The Empire values your opinion. Does it not? Of course. Speak freely. Well, uh, you're raising our taxes. And why not? Do you not enjoy prosperity? We barely have enough to eat, sir. We can't afford more taxes. We... We will look into your situation. You have my word. You see? A vivid example of the Empire's understanding and empathy. An Empire worthy of our support and humble gratitude. You are pleased. I shall be when he proves himself by doing what we really brought him here for. Which, by the looks of it, may be just about now. Bishop Ambrose, what a surprise! Although I must say I was somewhat expecting you. What is this that I have been told? That we must relinquish one of our churches for your use? Our basilica? The Empire needs it. To teach your own views. With all due respect, Bishop, not all the citizens of Milan believe the same as you do. Then the solution is an easy one, Prefect. Build your own church. <laughs> Perhaps this is best settled in... private. The Empire wants it. It's as simple as that. And you have not been told, Ambrose. You have been ordered. Ordered? To give up a church? Yes, by the Empress Mother, on behalf of her son, your Emperor, as a Roman citizen. You have every right to see to the things of the Empire, as I have every right to see to the things of God. That basilica belongs to him. No, it does not. And to his people, which, as you very well know, are many. Do not threaten me, Ambrose. We shall have that basilica one way or another. Then you will have to get rid of me first. And that can be easily arranged. You may go now, Ambrose. He does have sway. The people seem to like him. Well, of course they do. When he became bishop, he gave away all of his money to them. To the poor. What? Truly? A ploy, Augustine. All a ploy. He did it to gain their favour, that's all. He plays his way, and we shall play ours. Tell me what to debate, and I will win it on your behalf. Your very words, Augustine. Here's your chance to prove it. With Ambrose? His influence is too great. The Christians too numerous. The Empress will have that church, and your job is to win the people over by convincing them that Ambrose is wrong in not giving it to her. Consider it done. What could possibly stop me? Mother? Augustine! You're here! It's been a long time, my son. Too long. Come, we shall go to my house. You'll be impressed. Things have been going so well for me. Tell me, have you been to the Basilica? Have you met Bishop Ambrose? The bishop? Yes, Mother, we've met. I've heard so many good things about him. His sermons are read even in Tagaste, and I've been quite moved to tears by all he has to say. Scribes, assistants, money. Look at this house, Mother. Have you seen upstairs? Would you like this to... This is what you left us for? Yes. To make something of myself. Your son serves the Emperor now, Mother. When you could be serving the King of all Kings. Using your talents for something truly good. Serving the Emperor doesn't meet with your high expectations. I know you can do better. You could be serving God. Once and for all, I am an educated man. 
I do not believe those useless fables. I have worked hard for this position, and... <sighs> this is useless. You lied to me, Augustine. Left your son and his mother in my care. We had no idea where you were. I did what I had to do. Look what I've accomplished. I've won the respect of the Empress. But do you respect yourself, Augustine? It's... it's a good position, Mother. You didn't answer my question. I know this all comes at a price. What price are you paying for all this, Augustine? You're never satisfied with me. Always trying to change me. Well, you can't change me, Mother. I am what I am. And I don't believe in your God. He's done nothing for me. I need to know everything there is to know about Bishop Ambrose. What he's preaching. I have labored too hard to lose all this just because of some silly superstitious old man who manipulates uneducated fools with his fantasy tales that lead to nothing. Now let's get to work and find out as much as we can to bring the bishop's influence to an end. Fables, nonsense and foolishness. That is how some people perceive our faith. And why? Because rather than hoarding, we prefer to give. Rather than striving for position and status, we favor humility. Instead of seeking to rule, we choose to follow Christ's example of service to those less fortunate. Christ living in our hearts motivates us to love and care for one another. And how do we do that? We feed the hungry. We clothe the naked, for in so doing Christ tells us, What you have done for the least of my brethren, you have done it to me. The bishop puts his own importance over that of the good people with poisonous words. Bishop Ambrose manipulates the people. Oh. Christ said, You know that rulers lord it over their subjects, and that high officials exercise authority over their people. But it must not be so with you. Instead, whoever wants to become great among you must become as a servant, just as I did not come to be served, but to serve. In God's kingdom, words are not enough. God calls us to action! Action! While he may be good with words, Ambrose does nothing to help. Oh, this is ridiculous. I've got to find something to use against Ambrose. Anything. Augustine, you came again. Bishop Ambrose, this is my son. Ah, yes. The voice of the Emperor. I'm happy to see you here. Um, just curious. That's all. <gasps> We're taking care of them. They're the children of... I... I know who they are. Then you may also know these people. You're not saying that... Yes. As you can see, the Emperor's mandates have left more than one family in ruin, and I will not abandon them. I... Um... Good afternoon, Bishop. He doesn't belong in the Emperor's palace. God has something better for him. I know it. Oh, Bishop, if, if only you would convince him. No. <laughs> but... Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. I know them, and they follow me. No one can convince Augustine. When he is ready, he will hear God's voice. Besides, God cannot refuse such prayers and tears as those that you faithfully pour out for your son. Take comfort. Augustine, isn't this a coincidence? Come, get in. Researching for your speech? You look like you need a little relaxation. The speech I gave last week. People were arrested afterward. Of course. People break the law, they get arrested. That's how we take care of the Empire. The young man, he had a family. 
And you said you would look into his situation. I did. And he needed to pay his taxes. For the good of the Empire. You have no idea what it takes to run this Empire. You keep to your speeches and leave the rest to us. Am I understood? By the way, do well tomorrow and the Empress has decided to raise your pay. A toast to the voice of the Emperor. A toast. A toast. How fortunate that the good bishop himself agrees on the importance of unity and the welfare of others. For is this not what our dear emperor has in mind? To use the basilica as a place of teaching, but not just the teaching that Ambrose approves of. Does not our emperor have the right to use the basilica as he pleases? Why the soldiers? What's happening? Putting action to your words, Augustine. Now come, you haven't finished just yet. Bishop Ambrose, the soldiers, they're coming. What is this? You never said anything about soldiers. You wanted people persuaded, not- You are the voice of the emperor. Do your duty, persuade them to vacate. Kate the church! Ambrose! Ambrose! Bishop Ambrose! Ambrose! You are ordered to vacate this basilica at once! By what authority? By the author- By the authority of Justina, your Empress, this is her word, and I speak on her behalf. And I, on behalf of God. This church belongs to him, and that is how it will remain. Anything? The few that are in there refuse to leave. Others have come to join them, but we have orders not to let anyone through. I need to speak with the bishop. Bishop. You've come to dissuade me. Well, why not vacate and avoid this confrontation? You preach love of neighbor, peace, do you not? Peace with our neighbors, yes, of course. Peace with false teaching, injustice, corruption and greed, never. Let me ask you, will the Empress feed the hungry, take care of the destitute, provide the people with the hope that comes from God? In some causes, silence is dangerous. The Empress is a caring... Augustine, that will not work with me. I just don't understand. You and I are both well-educated men. You could have position, a good life. You could have been the voice of the Emperor, and instead... I have chosen to speak on God's behalf. You have attained many of the things you long for, yet you are restless, Augustine. Isn't it time you gave God a chance? <sighs> My son, it's cold out there. Be safe. You're not going to lecture me, berate me, tell me- What to do? You once told me that I cannot change you. You're right, Augustine. I cannot. But I know God can. You want me to say what? That Ambrose tells the people to rise against the Empire. We need an excuse to take the church by force. It's been days. But he hasn't said that. He speaks of another kingdom. He teaches treason. I am telling you, he does not. Then lie! What? 
don't look so surprised. It's what you've been doing all along, isn't it? Twisting the truth for our gain, for yours. Wake up to reality, Augustine. This is the price you pay for this kingdom, the kingdom of Earth, not that fantasy of a kingdom that Ambrose deceives people with. It's what you wanted, isn't it? Wealth, power, prestige, honor. You like it, all this? I... Then fight for it! It's not the Basilica that you're after, is it? You want Bishop Ambrose out of the way. You're an intelligent young man, and it's taken you this long to figure that out. Get Ambrose out of the way, and we have the people. We're ready for your orders, Prefect. Orders? Proceed, Captain. Take it by force. And you, if you value your position, use your skills to explain our actions. Remember, Ambrose is guilty of treason. Bishop is not even coming out. He's... Give up, Ambrose! You really think you're going to stop us? No! This house belongs to God and to his people. He will defend it. Pathetic. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> coming from? From the farms, the streets, the market, the shops, the alleys, from all over the city. These are our people, Prefect, the Christians of Milan. But, but, steady. Me too. I want to be a Christian too. Steady, you worthless fool. Wait for me. <laughs> Well, what are you waiting for? You know what you have to do. Persuade the people that Ambrose has spoken treason, that he tells them nothing but lies, lies, lies. Go! Or lose your position, all you have worked so hard for. He'll take care of it. You'll see. Lies. All lies. What did I tell you? That is what you have been told. Lies to keep you enslaved. Lies to deceive you. Lies, lies, lies. That is what you have been told by this empire. No, it's not the empire. It's the bishop. He's the one that's at fault. He speaks treason, treason. Give me that! Kill him! Kill Ambrose! No! What? Arrest this man for trying to kill the bishop and take over the church! What? But no! No! Why? You're an intelligent man. I'm sure you'll figure it out. Take him away! Captain, remove your troops and take me back to the palace. You're finished, Augustine! Finished! Do you hear me? Finished! You are sure that returning to Carthage is the best idea? I need time to read the scriptures, to know what to do with my life. Now that I am no longer the voice of the Emperor. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, what became of those two, Rufus and Brutus? You recall, they joined the church. Yes. They were so affected by the bishop's teaching that, well, Brutus put it best when he said, 
I know I'm not the brightest of men, Rufus, but it seems to me that here we have worked so hard to get promoted into service to the Empress, when all the while the king of the whole universe has been extending his arms to us. And, well, I'd just as soon run to his welcoming arms and serve him. Seems he'd be a lot better to be around than the Empress. Brutus, that's the wisest thing I ever heard. And they joined a monastery. Like it says in the scriptures, they found a pearl of great price and sold all that they had and bought it. Augustine? All these years, I have read, studied, struggled, worked my way up in this world, and these simple, uneducated, and not the brightest of men, they step up to your kingdom before I do. Why? Please, help me. I don't know what to do. Take and read. Take and read. Take and read. Take and read? Now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Therefore, cast off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Walk as in the day, not in drunkenness, not in strife and envy, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ. Lord. Lord. Lord! Having been baptized by Bishop Ambrose, Augustine and his son, along with his friend Olypius, made preparations to return to Carthage, Tunisia. As they stood on the shores of Ostia, Italy, Monica shared the promise that God had given to her through a dream. Having shed many tears in prayer for you, God saw fit to comfort my heart with a dream. I stood on a plank, crying, when suddenly a man, joyous, smiling, approached me. Why are you weeping? It is for my son's soul. But why? <laughs> Don't you see that where you are, there he stands also? You stood next to me. It was the assurance I needed that my prayers would be answered. And now, my work is ending, Augustine. But yours, yours is only beginning. She died shortly thereafter, having seen her son surrendered to God. Augustine returned to Carthage, and though he sought a quiet life of reflection and solitude, it was not to be. He was soon made priest and eventually bishop, although it was not a position he felt worthy of. Like Ambrose, Augustine embraced his responsibility heart and soul. He became a beloved pastor and a powerful defender of the faith. As a theologian, Augustine wrote 113 books and treatises, over 200 letters and over 500 sermons. Among them, The Confessions and The City of God. In the Western Church today, he is considered to be one of the most influential early church fathers. You have made us for yourself, O Lord, and our hearts are restless until they rest in you.